One of Las Vegas' biggest employers announces massive layoffs. But will those employees get hazard pay? Hey, good afternoon, everybody. This afternoon's LA. Hope you're good and safe. Thanks for tuning in. Congratulations, you made it to the weekend. Yes. Uh, afternoon's LA starts every day at 3.30 with a check. Then goes to hazard pay. Then FPUC. Please tune into FPUC. Boy, we have big, great news tonight about that as well. And then finally, rent. Eviction moratoriums, mortgage forbearance, and everything all wrapped up into that. Um, really shocking news, some great news, and some what the hell news tonight about hazard pay, especially for those that are essential workers waiting to figure out when they would actually receive their money. Let me explain what's going on. I mean, hazard pay remains a lot of people's discussions and a lot of people's questions. And let me answer right off the top a couple of questions I've seen percolate, uh, permeate, and vacillate in the last couple of hours about hazard pay. First, people have asked, can I get hazard pay if I'm a 1099? Yes. Can I get a hazard pay if I'm an independent contractor, sole proprietor? Yes. Can I get hazard pay if I don't have a boss? Ah, uh, boy that if you have no one you report to, no one at all, and that you are the only indicator of your employment and your work, don't know. I simply just don't know. I had one viewer talk about that they, he fixes refrigerators at, at schools and he has his own refrigerator company. Well, who would apply for hazard pay for him? Um, don't really know the answer. What makes it confusing is the answers of the previous questions were all yeses. I mean, hazard pay does provide coverage for Uber and Lyft cop drivers, does provide coverage for a person who, you know, um, does maintenance at, let's say, a, at a building and is paid by the building, but they're an independent contractor. But what happens is there's no one that you know, in, is indicative of your employment. It's likely, but I can't guarantee it, it's likely that hazard pay would have it passed through the person who's actually writing you a check. So if you were that refrigerator guy who went to the schools and fixed the refrigerators with your own refrigeration company, if the school's writing you the check or the school, you know, school district, they would apply for you. Um, that's why you have to have these conversations. But what happens if that boss is no longer around? What happens if you don't have that job anymore? What happens if you have multiple jobs? I've detailed that a lot on this channel. We have no inherent clear answer about it with the exception of the last one. If you worked multiple essential jobs during the pandemic from January all the way up to the present, yes, all those different jobs can apply for essential uh, hazard pay for you. I mean, that's really, really what's great news. But if your boss, is nowhere to be found, if the job is now closed, the business no longer exists, and you worked a buttload of hours, and you're entitled to $10,000 of hazard pay, and you're like, give me that hazard pay, and it's like, but the boss is gone, the business shut down, what do you do? Don't know yet. Um, <laughs> this is where Petty Pelosi and her drafting skills really screwed you over. I really don't know. Hazard pay has, you know, for example, pays restaurant workers, pays restaurant workers. Well, we know a lot of restaurants have shut down. They've gone bankrupt. They've closed the door, physically closed the door. There's no one in there. You can't get in there. The door's shut. And then, you know, the owners may be out of state. They don't, you know, you don't see them. And the other, the boss who used to be your boss would not write you the tax check would be corporate. So, I mean, how would you get anyone to apply for hazard pay for you in that situation? don't really know the answer. And I gotta tell you, I get that question literally hourly, and the answer's all the same. You're not alone. It's going to be happening everywhere. I mean, it's, look, it's just, you know, when I talk about Mitch McConnell, whose brain cells are simply, you know, sometimes in the, um, 
in the crematorium. They're just, you know, they're, they're, they've gone to the other life. Uh, we're talking about Petty Pelosi and, and, you know, her house Democrats who really wrote a bill to provide hazard pay to people who may have worked in essential workers in a job that just doesn't exist anymore and says that the job should go get, get the money. Well, what if the job doesn't exist anymore, Nancy? Well, go get the money. <laughs> Petty, yes. Uh, confusing, yes. Ridiculous, yes. Typical for Nancy Pelosi, yes. Um, and then there's this. Yeah, boy. 18, not 18, but 18,000 people are being laid off in Las Vegas today. One of the town's biggest employers. Guess which one? You guessed right. MGM Resorts. It's laying 18,000 people it previously furloughed as employees. Um, and it's sending out separately 18,000 letters. Boy, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm about to say. Nate's going to really have to chase that postman to make sure those letters are delivered. 18,000 letters are going out to 18,000 employees who sadly are going to lose their job. I mean, this is just horrible. It's gut-wrenching. Um, these are people who were furloughed initially. Now they're going to be laid off. They're going to offer health benefits to furloughed employees on September 30th, which is, you know, just a few days ago, for a few days from now. And um, these are permanent job cuts. Awful. Awful. Um, these are people who clearly include essential workers. Now, a casino, you know, craps table guy is not a essential worker. But there's a lot of people at MGM that are essential workers, whereas the person, you know, parking the cars or... Um, you know, uh, I, well, we've got, we've gone through what the essential workers are, and now MGM, which includes New York, New York, Park MGM, um, says that it's just really a tough situation, and the company currently employs seventy thousand employees in the United States, but this is just eighteen thousand. Uh, and that they're dealing with. Nothing pains me more than delivering this news like this, says CEO Bill Homer, uh, Hornbuckle. The heart of this company is our employees and the world-class service we provide. Please know that your leadership team is working around the clock to find ways to grow our business and welcome back, welcome back more of our colleagues. Um, federal law requires them to give a separate separation date if they're following them for more than six months. August 31st, marks the sixth month of their administrative separation from uh, the furloughed employees. If this sounds familiar, it should. If you're an essential worker and you're worried about your job security, it is, it is, it is not unusual. Um, this six month um, date to give you a notification whether you're coming back or being fired is what is in place for anyone who's furloughed. So if you've been furloughed and you're wondering if you're coming back or not coming back, Look at the calendar and look at like six months minus a few days. That's when you'll find out. And this is bad news. Um, this is not just for Las Vegas. It's, it's for, you know, internationally across the United States where they actually employ 70,000 employees. Um, so as we sit here today and we wonder what's going to go on with hazard pay and, you know, how, where, when, all those wonderful things. One, as a Purple Power, you really need to ramp it up. I mean, the movement at the moment is really those standalone bills, standalone checks, stimulus checks, standalone FPUC, standalone eviction moratorium. But how about hazard pay? Well, hazard pay is really, unfortunately, going to still be caught up in that monstrous 1,800-page behemoth of a bill that Petty Pelosi thinks is so wonderful. And it's not. And as we sit here today, on a Friday afternoon, we're enduring yet another scandal being delivered by Nancy Pelosi. Petty Pelosi's chasing another person over a scandal today, like we've on to our third scandal this week. And nowhere during this time has she given us numbers. Nowhere during this time has she said, is hazard pay still front line, still remaining in your negotiations you know all this week all last week you know probably tomorrow and probably next week as well she'll say um i'm not coming back unless um you republicans come up a trillion dollars i'll come down a trillion dollars and you know about you know what i'm about to say i've been tweeting it non-stop where are you getting the one hundred one trillion dollar cut from nancy what are you cutting to save $1 trillion. Is it hazard pay? 
you know, it, it, it is those type of things that people just don't like politicians. They just don't like politicians. When they say things, but they don't explain what they are. Okay, you want to cut $1 trillion from a $3.2 trillion Heroes Act bill, 1,800-something pages. What are you cutting? Are you cutting hazard pay? Are you defunding something else? Are you reducing the amount of hazard pay? Are you just, what are you doing? I have always said that it's not hazard pay, that $1 trillion is just too much. That's clearly something else. But as I sit here today, I mean, the woman keeps on giving press releases and press interviews. Like, more often that, you know, Starbucks makes a frappuccino soy latte. And it's like, you know, okay, Nancy, can you answer the question? What's happening with hazard pay? What's the $1 trillion you're cutting? I mean, she doesn't tell us. There's, and, you know, she's not the only one in this group. Steve Mnuchin gave me some numbers and gave, gave, me, gave us some numbers about, what was it, three weeks ago? When he appeared on Squawk Box with David Faber and Jim, and Jim Cramer. I think because they actually asked him, uh, if I recall watching that video. And, you know, in the broadcast. And he started rambling and running off numbers really fast. And that was it. When was the last time you've heard some numbers from Steve Mnuchin? When was the last time you heard some numbers from Mark Meadows? No, Moving Meadows won't even tell you what FPUC number he wants. You know, we need to extend unemployment benefits. Okay, what number? How about hazard pay? Oh, uh, you know, I've never seen a group of people that just literally have no clarity. You know, it's, it's a mixture of are they playing coy? Are they playing stupid? Do they not know? Are they, you know, past their prime, I guess is the correct way to say it? Uh, are they like aged beef that it's, you know, time to you know, feed it to the dog and just say goodnight? <laughs> you're just, you know, you're not really helpful at this point. Um, it's just really not clear. And so as I sit here today, what is the future of Hazabate? I don't know. Is Hazabate going to survive the second stimulus package? I don't know. Has Nancy Pelosi given us any guidance what's happening with Hazabate? Well, she says it once in a few blue moons, uh, things that sort of sound like essential workers. Has a president done anything? Yeah, he said that tweet like three weeks ago that he says he wants to protect fire and 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 police and medical and teachers only. <laughs> All the rest of you, you know, tough luck. Um, has he said anything since then? No. Has Mark? No. Has Steve? No. Has Chuck? No. What have they talked about? Postal. What are they talking about today? Pompeo. What are they going to talk about tomorrow? Something that starts with a P. <laughs> yeah, though, it's... I just don't know. I really don't know. And Meadows says, it's been Speaker Pelosi really driving the train as a conductor more than really anyone else. But Meadows, you haven't given us any clarity. Um, you really just don't tell us anything. Uh, the concern is that, you know, we have a very tight schedule in September. They got about 15 days to balance the budget. If they don't, the government shuts down. Sorry, essential workers, <laughs> again. Um, and that movie Meadows thinks that barely, basically uh, Petty Pelosi is going to do these bills together and going to get them approved at the same time. Well, that's a lot of bills. That's a lot of pages in just 15 days. Do you think they can get it done? drop in the comments below yeah hard to say uh that could be a very short conversation if they're not willing to meet in the middle we're not going to budge understand that we have we have to move they have to move they aren't trying anything we have to say them we're willing to meet you in the middle but if you're willing to meet in the middle then we can sit down and talk that's you you call me i'm going to turn your call or break okay, bring more money to the table uh okay <laughs> If you're meeting in the middle, this is like Malcolm in the middle, DC vision, um, Malcolm in the middle. If you're meeting in the middle, Petty, uh, what are you getting rid of? Hazard pay? I, I just don't know. Uh, and that's what we sit here and we're so worried about. Uh, boy, what a week it has been. If you like this video, take out that Javita Carranza scarf and just smack it. Smack that, smack that like button. The algorithm loves when you hit the like button because ultimately this video goes higher in the ranks before people doing this and this and that and those and them and funny things with their hands. Uh, I won't do that ever to you.
<laughs> I'm here for you. Hit that subscribe and alert button on the front of this channel so you can alert every time that um, something like this happens. You know, 18,000 employees let off, laid off. Horrible. Horrible, horrible. Um, and every time, you know, Petty Pelosi uh, answers Moving Meadows phone calls and say, hey, what's your name? Uh, coming up next is FPUC. Really great news. Got to tune into that video. Really, really great big news. And then rent. As always, stay informed, stay smiling, stay focused, and stay available for more.